After a few weeks, when my legs were stronger, the man came down the stairs holding something big and brown. He set the brown thing down on the floor and gently picked up one of my brothers, popping him inside. In the box, buddy, the man said. Don't worry, it won't be for long. My brother yelped. I could hear him, but I couldn't see him. All of us started yipping and barking as the man picked us up one by one and put us where he had put my brother, in the box. It was like being in a tiny room, with a floor and walls of something smooth and slippery. My tiny claws slipped and slid. They slipped and slid even worse when the man lifted the box into the air. My brothers and sisters scrambled all over each other, trying to figure out what was happening. I stood on two sisters and hooked my paws over the edge of the box and peeked out. The man was climbing up the stairs, and my mother was trotting behind him. That made me feel better. We could not be going anywhere dangerous if mother was coming. Whoops, back inside, girl, said the man. Don't fall out. He gently pushed my paws off the box's edge, and I landed on the same idiot brother who had knocked me into the water bowl. He chewed on my foot before I yanked it away. The man carried us for a little while longer and then set the box down. One by one, he and the woman lifted us out. We were somewhere incredible. It was called outside. The light was the first thing. It was so bright, I could barely see for several minutes. Then there was something strange under my paws, something springy and soft, like the blanket, but prickly. Grass. I bit it to show it who was boss. It didn't bite back. So I figured that was settled. I was in charge of the grass. And the smells. I had learned the smells of my mother and my littermates and the blanket where we had lived and the woman and the man who came to visit us. But now the air was moving, blowing past me and tickling my nose with a million smells that I couldn't sort out. My brothers and sisters rushed past me, yelping, stumbling, falling on their faces, and rolling onto their sides. I stood still, with my nose in the air, trying to understand where I was. The grass underfoot smelled sharp and fresh. There was another smell underneath that, dark and dense and rich. It smelled like something that would be good to dig. The moving air brought more smells from farther away, something smoky and tasty from inside the house, something sweet from the bushes alongside it, something harsh and sour and stinking that roared by too fast on the other side of a tall wooden fence, and something mysterious and furry and alive, like me.